Good morning. It's me, Lil Hamal, your science teacher. I'm going to teach you uh, the classification of plants and animals. Uh, I'm going to teach you the animal kingdom almost the last part of this lesson. We are going to terminate this lesson today. Well, so I'd like to revise what I did yesterday. So I talked about the vertebrates. The vertebrates, subkingdom vertebrata, classified into five classes. Class 1, Pisces, belonging all the fishes. Amphibia, belonging the toads and frogs. Likewise, Reptilia, all the crawling animals, including snakes, turtles, turtles, lizards, etc. Number 4, Class Abes. Abes is a class where all the birds are belonging. And number 5, Mammalia, all the mammals um, included in the class, Mammalia, the fifth one. Today, we are going to talk about class Abes. Let's talk about some of the important characteristics of the Abes. Okay, good. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the Abes. The, the term Abes is related with the birds, related with the birds. And all the birds belonging are belonging to this class, the class Abes. Okay, have a look on the screen. The Naptru will be talking about these things. Well, they have the streamlined body, and the body is covered with feathers. And they are homeothermic. And they have the four wings, they have, they have the four limbs modified into the wings. They have a pair of wings. Likewise, they have toothless beak or bill. So the hind limbs are adapted for walking, perching, or swimming. And one of the most important characteristics, the birds are mainly, the skin of the birds is mainly devoid of the glands, but there is a gland called preening gland or oil gland. The skull is monocondylic and they have pneumatic bones. So the fertilization, internal, internal fertilization. And there are altogether nine air sacs or airbags that makes the body lighter adapted for aerial mode of life. Well, have a look on the board. Well, so the, the apes, their body is covered with feathers. Feathers not found in any of the, the class. So the feathers, presence of feathers, or the body is covered with the feather is one of the main characters. They are homeothermic. I told you, what is poikilothermic? The cold-blooded animals are called poikilothermic, but homeothermic is warm-blooded animals. What do you mean by warm-blooded animals? The warm-blooded animals are those animals in which the body temperature remains the constant. The body temperature does not change according to the environment environmental factor, environmental temperature. For example, if the environmental temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, the body temperature remains the same. Okay? It remains the same. It remains the same means not uh, 20 degrees Celsius. It remains constant. For example, in case of human being, the body normal temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. We are homeothermic. The body temperature remains 37 degrees Celsius. We are homeothermic because the body temperature remains the constant. If the body temperature does not change according to the changing the temperature of the surroundings, 
such as organisms, such as animals are called homeothermic. All the apes and mammals are homeothermic, including human beings. The, the four limbs, four limbs means the hands are modified into the wings for flying in the birds. And they have a beak, also known as bill. It is toothless. What does it mean? It means there is a beak. The beak hasn't got any tooth. And there is a gland, that gland is known as whale well gland or preening gland, helps for preening the feathers. For example, this is the bird. Okay, this is the basic plan of the bird. So it's, it is without the feathers at the moment. So here is a gland, this gland, it has got a gland, whale well gland. Here is a preening gland at the tail region that produces whale and and the birds preen the birds preen the feather birds preen the feather preening preening like combing the preening the feather okay while resting on the branch of the tree they have the bones hollow bones these hollow bones are continuous from the lungs and air sacs where the air directly goes into the bones from the lungs. Such so, so hollow bones are known as pneumatic bones. The pneumatic bones is only the characteristics of the apes. The fertilization is internal, internal fertilization and, and they have got air sacs also known as air bags altogether nine air sacs. So the body contains altogether nine air sacs help for, uh, for aerial mode of the life, helps in flight. So, um, so, so think about this thing. So feathers, homeothermic, wings, toothless beak or bill, the printing gland or whale gland, pneumatic bones or hollow bones, internal fertilization, air sacs, these are the major characteristics of the, of the birds. Have a look on the, on the slide and if something left, we'll talk about these and we'll see some of the examples. Okay, so homeothermal forms means uh, the body temperature remains the constant like in human beings. Monocondylic skull means the skull is joined with, with the first vertebra with the single condyle, with the single condyle. Likewise, the heart is up for chambered. It is unlike that of reptiles, heart for chambered, heart for chambered. Out of them, two auricles and two ventricles. It is like this. Auricles, auricles, ventricles, ventricles. Okay, good. The fertilization, internal, internal fertilization. Fertilization takes place inside the female's body. Uh, the last point is the parental care highly developed means the parents care the young ones. It is that of very high degree. Okay, parental care highly developed in them. And obviously they are oviparous. They are oviparous, oviparous. What does it mean? They lay eggs, oviparous. Have a look, some of the examples. Examples, P, fowl, pavo, pigeon, columba, owl, the budo, vulture, jaipus, lepophorus, dafe, etc. These are some examples of the apes, birds. So I have a look some of the pictures. So Dampe, number one, number two, the pigeon, house pigeon, Columba, Livia. Next, the peacock. Nepal has got a lot of the peacocks. And its female is called peahen. That's a male one. That's why it is called peacock. The penguin, it is a bird found in cold region, found in cold region, so it's a penguin. Next one, ostrich, so, so this is a huge flightless bird and found in African continent. 
A sparrow, a little bird found in hilly region of Nepal. Likewise, this is kingfisher. The kingfisher is very famous for hunting the fishes. Emu, this is another flightless bird endemic in Australia. It's a national bird of Australia, that's emu. Um, the crow, it's a very, very common bird in the, in the hilly region of Nepal. Kiwi, this is another flightless bird endemic to New Zealand. That's why the people in New Zealand, they are also known as Kiwi and the country itself is known as Kiwi, New Zealand. Okay, we have got the last class, class Mammalia. Just to keep on looking on the screen and uh, I'll be um, the back on the board in a minute stating about important terms. As soon as we finish the mammals, I've got some of the important questions to you and we'll be discussing these. So I'd like to ask you to not leave the session. Okay. So Mammals are tetrapod vertebrates with mammary glands. Mammary glands means milk producing glands. Mammary glands. So from that mammary glands, the actual the class mammalia came. So the mammy, the mammy means the breast or other. In animals, U D D E R, ada, ada, and in human beings, the breast that produces milk. They are homeothermic. Okay, so likewise, they have external ears. That's called pinna, plural pinni, P I N N A E. And the body is covered with the hairs. That's a typical characteristics only found in a mammal, not found in any of the classes. And there is presence of seven cervical vertebrae. The skull is dicondylic, means the skull is connected to the first vertebra with the two condyles, means um, two connecting points. There is presence of the diaphragm. Heart for chambered. Uh, basically, they have enucleated RBCs. They have two pairs of the cranial nerves, the nerves arising from the from the, the brain and the fertilizing internal and they are baby paras unlike that of others. All the classes that we talked about OB paras. Let's talk about these things for a couple of minutes. The mammals have the mammary glands for producing milk for their young ones. They are homeothermic, their body temperature remains constant, not changed according to the temperature of the surroundings. That's why they are called homeothermic. For example, if the body temperature of human being is 37 degrees Celsius, for example, constant, if the surrounding temperature 40 degrees Celsius, is still the human body temperature 37 degrees Celsius. If the surrounding temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees Celsius, again the body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, it remains constant and mammals are homeothermic. So, body temperature remains constant. Pinna, two external ears, like here, external ears. Okay, pinna, singular, pinni, plural, two external ears present like this. Okay, and here, the body hair in human beings, the hair are present only in certain places and certain pattern, but in animals, the hair covers whole body. So, the body is covered with the hair, not feathers, not not scales. So hair. So diaphragm. Okay, so, so have a look. 
I just make a very rough diagram. This is respiratory system. These are two lungs, two lungs. So, this is thoracic cavity, this is abdominal cavity. The thoracic cavity and an abdominal cavity is divided by a structure, a membranous structure. That structure is called diaphragm. D I A P H R A G M. Only present in the mammals, not in other classes. Okay, so the diaphragm helps in respiration just below the thoracic cavity, just below two lungs, diaphragm. The heart has got four chambers, two auricles and two ventricles, just like this, auricles, auricles, ventricles, ventricles. RBC is a nucleated means without nucleus. But some of the animals like llama and the camel, they are having nucleated RBCs. A nucleated RBCs means RBCs without nucleus. Then the BB Paris, the last one is the BB Paris means they give the birth of young ones. They are birth giving animals, not the egg laying animals. Okay, have a look at some of the examples. Examples of the mammals, whales, dolphins, bat, echidna, spiny ant eater, seal, tiger, elephant, monkeys, horse, human beings and many more. Okay, it's a bat, it's an aerial mammal, flying mammal. This is not a bird, this is the mammal, bat. Likewise, this is the blue whale, the, the whale, okay? Uh, that's a walrus, it's, um, it's a mammal found in Arctic region. It's a walrus. A dolphin, okay, it's a pretty, pretty cute animal. Hippopotamus, so it's very chubby and you know, something looks like a pig, but the huge one, but a bit different one. It's a hippopotamus. Seals found in the Arctic region, um, yeah, it's in the cold places. Likewise, echidna, spiny anteater. Interestingly, this is oviparous mammal. What does it mean? It, it lays the eggs, it doesn't give the direct birth of the young ones. Echidna, spiny anteater. So, spiny, the body is covered with the spines. Anteater means it eats ants. That's why it is called spiny anteater. Duck billed platypus, found in Australia. So, the bill, the, the the front part, the mouth is just like a bill, like that of the duck. That's a platypus. This is also egg laying the mammal. Okay, so interestingly, egg laying mammal, the echidna, the spiny anteater, and the duck billed platypus, they lay the eggs, eggs get hatched into the young ones, and young ones um, sucks, young ones suck the milk from the, from the mammary gland. That's interesting. Due to presence of mammary glands, they are called the mammals. Well, so I've got some of the activities. Students, I've got some of the questions and we'll be discussing these questions and uh, please try to tell an answer with me. First of all, I've got a question to you. The name, the phylum of the given animals. And we are talking about from animal kingdom. Okay, Sycon. Sycon. In which phylum does a sycon belong to? Sycon belongs to phylum Porifera. Tapeworm. Phylum Platyhelminths. Earthworm. Annelida. Pinworm. Platyhelm. I beg your pardon. Eskelminths. Pinworm. Eskelminths. Or Nemathelminths. Hydra. Cylinderata, starfish, echinodermata, jellyfish, cylinderata, octopus, mollusca, roundworm, nemathelminths or eskelminths, butterfly, arthropoda, silverfish, 
again arthropoda. Balanoglossus belongs to phylum Cordita, seahorse phylum Cordita, bat Cordita, the frog Cordita, and the last one, the sparrow, it's a bird, the phylum Cordita. So the question asks only the phylum. Okay, let's go next line. Question number B. State the class and an example of vertebrate is follows. Streamlined body, scales means presence of scales, pins, pins for locomotion, and the gills, gills for respiration. So you have to tell the class and one example. Okay, class, vices. One example, fish, rahu, katla. Or seahorse, shark. Number two, feather, bill, pneumatic bone. Okay, the class, abs. Example, a sparrow or crow. Three, need water for fertilization, poikilothermic, pressed tetrapod. Class, amphibia. Example, frog, hair. Mammary glands, baby paris. We just did that. Class mammalia. Example bat, human, or cow. Number five, dry scales, limbless, creeping creatures, cold blooded, dry scales, limbless, no limbs, no legs, no hands, creeping creatures. Class Reptilia, example, you can give that of the lizard, but there is one point, limbless, no limbs, it means should be snake. So question, question number five, class, reptilia, example, snake, S-N-A-K-E. Question number C, stir the phylum and an example is given. Question number one, cylindrical, bass-like, presence of ostia, vesculum. Okay, you need to tell phylum and an example. Phylum porifera, example, cycon. Number two, exclusively marine invertebrates, totally marine, spiny skin, skin covered with spines. Star sept, tube feet, locomotion with the help of the tube feet, exclusively marine, star sept, phylum echinodermata, example, starfish. 3. Dorsal ventrally flattened, leaf like, hermaphrodite, phlegm cells, phylum platyhelminths, example, liver fluke. Question number three, phylum platy helminths, P-L-A-T-Y-S-E-L-M-I-N-T-S-E-S, example, liver fluke. Four, cylindrical invertebrates, metameric segmentation, locomotion with the help of CT, cylindrical metameric segmentation, true segmentation. Okay. Locomotion with the help of the CT, phylum Annelida, example earthworm, Annelida earthworm, five. Notochord and vertebral column, homeo, homeothermic, okay, so pneumatic bones, okay, um, the phylum Cordita, a class abs. Now we have got to give an, an example. For example, a sparrow or a duck. Now let's go to the next question. Write short answers of the following. What do you mean by a radially symmetrical body of an organism? The radially symmetrical body of an organism means. The body can be divided into two equal halves 
by cutting through any plane but the cutting plane should pass through the central point or central region the body can be divided into two, two equal halves uh, but the cutting the cutting plane should pass through the through the center and can be divided into two equal halves by cutting through any of the plane such a type of body of animal is known as radially symmetrical body can be divided into equal halves by cutting through any plane but the cutting plane should pass through the center of axis what is triploblastic triploblastic means the body should develop from three germ layers during the embryonic development the three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm question number three define hemosilomet the body cavity in between elementary canal and body wall is called silom if the silom is filled with the blood is called hemosilomet if the body is i beg your pardon if the silom is filled with the blood that is called hemosilomet in which phylum the pearl the moti producing group belong to belongs to the answer is phylum mollusca state question number five state poikilothermic poikilothermic means the animals whose body temperature changes according to the temperature of the surroundings such animals are known as poikilothermic animals or cold blooded animals define oviparous and viviparous the egg laying animals are called oviparous and birth giving animals are called viviparous number seven what is pneumatic bone the light hollow bone the light l i g s t light hollow s o l l o w is called pneumatic bone number eight snakes and frogs go for hibernation during winter why because they are cold-blooded animals to escape from the cold they go for hibernation during the winter what is hibernation hibernation is also known as winter sleep because of extreme cold they go somewhere warm place and they go for sleeping they do not eat, they do not move they just rest breathing slowly keeping themselves alive okay so i'll let ask you to practice these questions uh, in your leisure time so these are all kind of homework for you so i'd like to revise uh, just showing and I just have a look you do these that one that one and also that one okay so i would like to terminate my class thank you very much you have a wonderful day today see you in next class and we'll have a lot of fun in the next class you have a good day today thank you very much